Hi fans of high quality entertainment. So I've picked 25 music documentaries. Now these aren't, you know, like concert videos, like uh, Talking Heads, Stop Making Sense. These are actual, you know, stories about bands. They might have some concert footage in it, but they're, they're documentaries. <laughs> and uh, I'm probably missing a, f a few, uh, but I've gathered together the ones I thought of in the last uh, day or so. And so the first 15, they're not ranked. They're just uh, telling you my thoughts on them. All of them, you know, there's, I, there isn't one single bad documentary. Uh, and then I've got the top 10 ranked. So here we go. First up is Bob Dylan. That's right. Uh, Don't Look Back. I watched this on Netflix. I think it's still on Netflix. I enjoyed it. Very good documentary. And uh, what I remember from it, because I haven't seen it in a few years, uh, was that one of the members of the Animals, the keyboardist, and something about, or and, and Donovan was there too. And somebody broke a glass or something and Bob Dylan wasn't very happy. And <laughs> that's my main memory of that. But at the time, I remember really enjoying the uh, documentary. <laughs> Every time I see this uh, documentary, I laugh. Beware of Mr. Ginger Baker. Now, Ginger Baker, I will say... Although, you know, may he rest in peace, but when he was alive, he wasn't exactly the nicest man. Uh, he wasn't very nice to his son. And he wasn't very nice to the documentary maker who he punched in the first few minutes of the, of the movie. <laughs> but uh, still, it's a very good documentary. And uh, I guess I enjoyed it. <laughs> This is Spinal Tap, one of the greatest documentaries ever. Uh, of course, believe it or not, it's a joke documentary, but it's very well done. It's very funny. Uh, the music, the actors are actual musicians. Uh, and yeah, it's just hilarious. And there's actually a real documentary coming up, uh, which is kind of the real Spinal Tap. The Devil and Daniel Johnson. Johnson or Johnston. Um, you know, he had, let's just say, some mental issues, sadly. But he was a very talented man. Uh, whatever, you know, I have some of these movies or documentaries that I haven't seen in a few years, but I still remember them. And my biggest memory of that movie is... He was in a plane with, I think, with his dad. And I, I don't, I'm not sure if it was his dad who was flying the plane or someone else. And Daniel decided to grab the controls and they almost crashed. The plane was going down. So it was pretty scary. But, uh, yeah, excellent documentary. You two rattle and hum. Um, yeah, I saw this at the theater when it came out. This was when U2 was probably at their most popular with the uh, Rattle and Hum, the, L uh, sorry, with the, the Joshua Tree album. And it was a good, uh, the concert footage was excellent. Some of the documentary, you know, the band wasn't always the most talkative at the time. And some of it was kind of uh, kind of boring or silly or whatever. But it was still, you know, overall interesting, I guess, is the word to, <laughs> to, to describe it. And like I said, the, the concert footage was excellent. Yeah, Eight Days a Week, The Touring Years, which I have on Blu-ray. I saw that at the theater. 
What I enjoyed the most actually wasn't the documentary, but what be, what came before it was the Shea Stadium footage, which sadly isn't part of the Blu-ray uh, for copyright reasons. Uh, but the documentary by Ron Howard was excellent, and you know, talking about the touring years and what they went through. So I remember enjoying it. Uh, I haven't watched it on the blue on Blu-ray in a few years, but I remember just you know enjoying it at the theater, but enjoying the Shea Stadium footage even more. Sound City, uh, by Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters, uh, about this studio. I really enjoyed it, showing the different uh, musicians, and it was cool to see someone like Rick Springfield. And Dave, you know, respecting him, he was, you know, really not my kind of music, but definitely a talented guy. And, uh, you know, Dave Grohl showing him lots of respect. And uh, I think Fleetwood Mac was in this too, I believe. And I, I just remember at the time, I, I really enjoyed it. Last Days Here... The band is Pent Pent Pentagram. Yeah, it's the lead. It's about the story of the lead singer Pentagram, and of course, drugs and uh, all of the issues he went through. And supposedly, he's. I've, I've seen recent. I was wondering if he's still alive, but he is, and he's still performing. And he looks pretty good for his age, and I think he. You know, it went through some rough years, but it's uh, really well done. It's kind of scary, some of it, showing what drugs can do to a person. And uh, there's, you know, funny moments, too. And uh, I highly recommend it. And actually, Pentagram, the band, was pretty good. Kind of Black sabbath -y. The Who, the kids are all right. Once again, some great concert footage. And uh, sadly, you know, near the end, it shows the, the final concert footage with Keith Moon on drums. And, you know, shows some rare clips at the time. And uh, I enjoyed that. I've got it on uh, DVD. The Bee Gees, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? I watched that about a year ago on Netflix. Excellent documentary. Uh, the only thing negative I would say is I was hoping that they would talk about the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band <laughs> fiasco, you know, making the movie with Peter Frampton, but that was never brought up for whatever reason. But otherwise, uh, very talented Gibb brothers and a great story. Now, David Bowie, I think Glenn Kellaway from The Basement, he's a huge David Bowie fan too. And I think we both feel the same way. It's good. It's a good documentary. But the the first hour or so is kind of really fast. It, but I guess it kind of resembles his career, his life, how it was all over the place. And so it's kind of uh, hectic the first hour or so it does slow down i think i enjoyed the second half of the movie a bit more when it kind of slowed down the pace a bit uh, of course the music is great it was interesting for sure i almost you know i can see they, they didn't want to make just a, a your typical documentary Be you know because it's david bowie and so it's very original uh, but I almost wish it was a <laughs> regular documentary sometimes. But still, it was it was very good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, The Velvet Underground, once again, I saw this on Netflix. I thought it was good. Um, I don't know. It's almost like you're some of these bands that you love so much. It's like you're never going to be 
be satisfied with <laughs> the documentary it's because you just want more and more. Uh, that's especially true with a certain artist coming up. But uh, overall, it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I wish it could have been better, but that's just me. Now, when, you know, that's the thing about documentaries. I love, I just love documentaries. Doesn't even man, it doesn't even matter if I, I'm not a fan of the artist. I saw, I, no, I've seen different documentaries, you know, on blues artists, uh, jazz artists that I don't even really know. And I've enjoyed them. I'm not a fan of the, the music of Wham, but George Michael is definitely a great talent. And it was interesting to hear the story of, uh, I forget the other member of Wham, his name at the moment, but it kind of tells his story, how he kind of pushed George Michael. George Michael was shy back, back in the day, and uh, he kind of pushed George. And so it's a very well-made documentary. I enjoyed it. Yeah, this is uh, the one, Frank Zappa, the documentary on him. I, once again, I enjoy all of these documentaries. But this one, I feel with Frank Zappa because even though he, had, he you know, sadly had a short life, he made, he was very creative and he made a ton of music through the years. And you almost need at least a three-hour documentary on him maybe four hours and this documentary i think was just 90 minutes or maybe two hours and i don't know it just seemed not long enough but it was interesting it was it was nice to hear from uh different band members and you know stories and everything uh so overall it was good but still i was disappointed enough It might get loud with uh, The Edge from U2, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, and Jack White. All three of them were, were very interesting. You know, it, some of you might not be a fan of The Edge, but I like I found all three of them very interesting. I think Jack White's uh, bits were the most interesting. And... Uh, I kind of wish that they would make it might get loud part two even with different guitarists or maybe drummers or bassists like geezer butler with uh john paul jones and paul mccartney <laughs> now we get into the top 10 ranked and just remember this is my opinion you're not always gonna agree let me know in the comments section below what are some of your favorite documentaries and maybe like i said i've probably forgotten some great ones but these are the ones that i have in the video so number 10 yeah i just saw this recently on uh, crave tv i'm not a fan of triumph just not my kind of band but it's a, it was an excellent documentary. It's really shows you, you know, it's kind of about the fans and the way that the band treats the fans. I won't give away the end, but it's, there's a very lighthearted, uh, ending to the documentary. And, uh, yeah, so I highly recommend it. Even if you're not a fan of Triumph, it's a very good documentary about music and fans once again i'm not a not much of a fan of metallica but i respect them and i think they treat their fans very well and this was very interesting at the time i haven't seen it since since i saw it a few years back but i remember it very well uh you know and james hetfield was going through some issues and one thing, 
I think the funniest thing in it was when Lar Lars Ulrich, I think he was playing some new music from Metallica to, I think it was his dad. And his dad wasn't very impressed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I had a new respect for Metallica after I saw this. And uh, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. Glenn Calloway from the basement lent me this, uh, the Blu-ray for In the Court of the Crimson King, a documentary. And I really enjoyed it, Glenn. Um, there's, you know, there's some sadness in it. One of the musicians had cancer during the filming and, uh, you know, I won't give away the whole story, but you should should see this documentary and also uh, just just the passion that Robert Fripp has with music you know maybe sometimes he goes a bit overboard with the seriousness but uh, there's one one near the end when he's being interviewed and he's asked this question and he starts to answer it and then he just stops and he's like quiet for seems like about two minutes and you, you slowly start to see uh, tears rolling down his face so it's very emotional and uh yeah highly recommend it number seven <laughs> this is the real spinal tap anvil canadian band story of anvil it's you know, it's got some, it just shows you about, pop, you know, being popular and the not so popular. And uh, there's quite a bit of humor in it, you know, and sadness too. And uh, great personalities. I really enjoyed the story of Anvil. Excuse me. Number six, once again, I'm not a big fan of the Eagles. They're very talented. Just, you know, they're, and their songs, of course, are great, but they just kind of, they don't interest me. But the story is very interesting, and they do a great job of telling the history. And, of course, uh, the situation with Don Felder and... Uh, you kind of feel very sorry for Don Felder. I think most people would be on Don Felder's side. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's an excellent documentary. I really enjoyed it. Number five. George Harrison, Living in the Material World. Yeah, I remember really enjoying this documentary uh i think the most touching scene in it was i think rinko telling the story but but when he was ill for i forget what it was what that was all about and of course george had cancer and he was he wasn't doing well and george was saying do you want me to go with you and you know and ringo's telling the story he kind of broke down telling the story it was very sweet Now, number four, I think some of you would probably expect it to be number one, but it isn't. It is Sparks, the Sparks Brothers. Yeah, great documentary. Of course, uh, in, the, in the documentary, they talk about their mom driving them to the Hollywood Bowl to see the Beatles in 1964, and they are playing. They're being... Uh, they're, yeah, they're playing at the Hollywood Bowl tonight with uh, They Might Be Giants opening up for them. So, very special night for them at the Hollywood Bowl. Excellent documentary. The only reason that's number four, I mean, it would be number one in my heart, or number two, maybe. The only thing is, it's a long movie, uh, two, two hours, 20 minutes. And I think if you're not a fan of the band, you might find some of it a little slow. 
because it goes through each and every album, which, you know, a fan like me loves. But still, I think overall, uh, uh, Edgar Wright did a superb job. And, you know, obviously because of this, they're playing at the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> and they're more popular than ever, thanks to Edgar Wright. So, And it also tells, you know, one other thing is it, even if you don't like the music, like I've said before, I think the story itself about never giving up, you know, being creative and doing what you love in life, like Sparks, they had some pretty, you know, down times and they just never gave up. They just kept going and going and going and going. So I highly recommend you see this movie yet if you haven't seen it. Number three, Rush, Beyond the Lighted Stage. Now, I love Sparks more than Rush, but this really uh, tells the whole story of their career. It's very moving. Uh, it's kind of similar to, to Sparks in a way of them, you know, early, earlier on, you know, the record company's kind of at them and they just never gave up. And they're they're doing things their way, similar to Sparks. And I also love the uh, extras, you know, like Rush having uh, dinner and drinking wine and getting, <laughs> getting drunk and everything. Even Molly loves this documentary. And uh, yeah, excellent documentary. Number two. Yeah, this was almost, this almost could be number one. And once again, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Glenn Campbell, but I definitely respect him. He was an awesome guitarist. And I love some of his songs, of course. And, you know, he had Alzheimer's disease and... It's just very moving, and I cried at the end, I admit it. Uh, my dad had Alzheimer's, and so it's just, if you haven't seen it, you you have to see it. It's, and it's, you know, you would think it's going to be depressing, and yeah, it is kind of depressing in a way, but it also, it's it's worth seeing. It is. So what do you think is number one? For me. It's the Beatles Get Back. And once again, like over six hours. So if you're not a big Beatles fan, this might, you know, some of it might be boring for you. I even know of a, a Beatles fan who thought, it was boring. I didn't. And a lot of Beatles fans didn't. I enjoyed every second of it. And the reason it's also number one is for many, many years, just like other Beatles fans, I thought that era of the Beatles was depressing for them and they weren't getting along and it was very dark and depressing, like I said. And then you see this in a whole new light, not to say that they didn't always, not to say that they were always getting along. Of course, there was friction and there were depressing days and everything. But there was a lot of happiness too, a lot of smiles, a lot of joking around. And I still remember seeing this for the first time on Netflix, watching the whole thing and then seeing the rooftop footage and there was just a, a certain, um, I think it was this, on the first get back where John and Paul are, you know, they're getting into it and they jump in unison. And I just, it just got to me, you know, after watching the whole, it just got to me and I was crying. It was just made me happy. And uh, yeah, so the Beatles get back for me is number one. And so I would love your thoughts in the comment section below. 
what are some of your favorite documentaries? And remember, like I said, not, you know, not like the Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't consider, I, I'm talking about real documentaries uh, on bands that might have some music, might have some concert footage, but also is trying to tell a story too. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.